presentation is on sustainable self-consolidating concrete uh, utilization of limestone powders. And I'm very happy to introduce uh, Dr. Natalia Cardellino. Uh, she's a professor and has a lot of experience during her graduate work. And we like to uh, be welcome. Hello, hello everyone. I'm Natalia Cardellino. Um, I'm a brand new assistant professor at Mercer University, um, and I'm going to talk today about work I did with my um, PhD, which I just finished in the summer, um, at Georgia Tech with uh, Kim Curtis and Russell Gentry. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about um, sustainable self-consolidating concrete, uh, for the, specifically for the precast industry, using limestone powders. So as we all know, we use a lot of concrete. Um, as a matter of fact, we're using about 20 gigatons of concrete um, are placed each year, and this has been tripling over the past 20 years. Um, because the rate of concrete, the rate of concrete is um, outpacing our population growth, and because of how much concrete we use, um, you know, right now cement production is the fourth largest, um, the fourth largest contributor of anthropogenic CO2 in the atmosphere, right after, um, oh, did I go off? Right after petroleum, coal, and natural gas. And as most of us know, the reason we have, um, the, there's so much CO2 from cement production has to do with the raw materials we use, which um, have calcium carbonate, and as we calcine that, it um, releases CO2 into the atmosphere. So there have been many, um, there's much research onto how do we minimize the carbon footprint of of our cement, um, looking at um, looking at carbon capture or making our kilns more efficient. But the one I want to focus on today is just using cement more efficiently. And when we look, when we think about that, it, it, we we think of two things. One is um, replacing a partial, a partial substitution of our cement with supplementary cementitious materials, or using mineral fillers. And whatever we do must be scalable. Um, and if you look at the graph on the right, it shows the availability. This is the worldwide avail availability of certain um, SCMs and mineral fillers. And we see relative to Portland cement that um, the SCMs that we're used to, silica fume, slag, and fly ash, the availability is, is quite a bit less than Portland cement, whereas limestone and calcine clay, we have a lot more of. And so what I'm going to focus on is limestone. And the way um, uh, limestone affects hydration in four main ways. Uh, the first is it's, um, it's far less reactive than cement. So we have a dilution effect. However, on the flip side, we can have increased particle packing depending on the size of the, the limestone particles that we're using. Um, we can have, if, if we use a fine limestone powder, we can get nucleation um, on the, where CSH precipitates onto the um, limestone powder itself. And then there's some research to show that chemical, um, that they're, the unhydrated C3A in our cement will in fact um, react with the limestone to form monocarbonate and hemicarbonates. So we'll see later in the presentation how these four, um, four hydration aspects come into play. So again, I'm dealing specifically with precast concrete. Um, precast is, is uh, this is a precast plant in Atlanta, Georgia, um, where uh, uh, beams and specimens are, are cast in this assembly line. And so there's a few requirements that are very, very specific for precast. Uh, for example, the concrete mix must be highly flowable, so we're looking, we're approaching self-consolidating concrete mixes. They, um, rapid set is important, rapid strength development is important, um, and still maintaining low shrinkage and creep, and then a smooth surface finish. There's a lot of post-production work that occurs in precast plants, so the smoother the surface finish, the less post-production work we can have. And a few benefits that um, that limestone has over, say, using fly ash, is that um, limestone powder is super soft. It's like talcum powder, um, so that you get less wear and tear on your equipment. You get improved workability and surface finish that we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, these are prices that I got from precast plants in Atlanta. The cost savings, um, limestone's about $46 a ton versus $60 um, for fly ash. And then there's no seasonal variability, at least where we are in Atlanta, um, the limestone we have a quarry that's about an hour north of Atlanta. So specifically what I was looking at was um, looking at self-consolidated concrete mixes for the precast industry um, and looking at how the properties of the SEC get affected by the median particle size of the limestone powder and the cement replacement. So I'm taking some of the cement away um, to make it more sustainable. 
and replaced it with limestone powder. I looked at first um, at the level of cement paste. I looked at hydration kinetics and time of set to see how the limestone powder affected those. And then I went to the level of the concrete where I looked at workability, compressive strength, um, creep, shrinkage, and surface finish. Um, these limestone powders and cements were blended together. They were not interground. Um, I used a type 3 cement because, again, we're dealing with precast where they want very, very high early strength. So I, I used a type 3 cement. These limestone powders all came from the same quarry. They're just ground at different rates. Um, the 40 micron is ground less than 25 micron in the 3 micron. So, um, uh, yeah, so chemically they're exactly the same. If you look at the graph on the right, this is the um, particle size distribution. The blue is the 3 micron, the orange is the 25 micron, and the 40 is the micron. So if I could characterize this relative to the cement, I would say that the 3 micron is finer than the cement, the 25 is similar to the cement, and then the 40 is coarser. So I'm really binding um, around the cement. And then the nomenclature I'm using throughout this presentation is um, T3 is for the type 3 cement that I'm using. L, you'll either see an L3, an L25, or an L40, depending on the, the, the median particle size of the limestone. And then in parentheses is the amount cement replacement. So first I looked at um, the reaction rate and set time. Um, and as you can see from the graph on the, the left, uh, again, the 3 micron is in blue, the orange is the 25, and the green is in 40. Uh, the 3 micron shifts the peak of the hydration curve to the left, showing um, that the, acceler the hydration is getting accelerated, it's a finer, it's a finer powder, um, and we're increasing set time. We're, the time to peak shifted, um, it's about 19% faster than the time of peak relative to just the cement with no limestone. The 25 micron um, shifted the peak to the left um, about 8%, and then the 40 micron slowing things down. Um, we see just a, a little change of 2% to the time of peak. When I look at, um, and this is just at 10% uh, substitution, but I, I, I did others. I'm, I'm not presenting that here. Uh, looking at the time of set, so how long it takes for the cement to harden. Um, Again, comparing it to the type 3 cement with no limestone powder, we again see that the 3 micron accelerates. Um, the initial set was 12% 12 per, 12 faster, um, and the final set was 13% faster. The 25 um, micron had um, a, a slowed thing, the time of set a little bit, and then the 40, we see a, a big change in the time of set, whereas the initial um, was slowed down by 39%. So next, I moved on to the level of the concrete. Um, I made concrete mixes with no, um, no limestone at all, so just type 3. Um, I replaced 15% of the cement with either a, the 3 micron, the 15, or the 40 micron limestone, and then I replaced with 25% of the 3, um, 25, and 40 micron. I kept every, I kept the same water to binder ratio, so that I, I, I kept cement and limestone as a, that, um, as the same, the total quantity. Um, I kept the uh, stone and natural sand, and now we've been learning that it would be great for me to have a middle aggregate there um, for workability. Um, but what I did do is I adjusted the high-range water reducer to get the slump flow uh, within the range that I wanted. So I wanted a slump flow of above 20 inches, and um, all my mixes were between 20 and 27 inches. I had a T20 time of 3 or 4 seconds, and then a VSI of 0 or 1. Um, I have a video here to show... This particular mix, oh, nope, Let's see if that works. This particular mix is made with the 25 micron limestone powder. Um, and the, that outer ring was, uh, was 20 inches. So what I found was that the mixes made with no limestone at all um, or with the 3 micron, the 3 micron was really, really sticky. It made my mix very, very sticky. Um, required more high range water reducer to meet the criteria that I wanted, the slump flow and the T20 time and the VSI that I wanted. Um, the 25 micron was kind of like the middle. And then the 40, the coarser limestone, I had great workability and I could reduce the high range water reducer. And you'll see um, later surface finish. Ah, here's surface finish. So then I, I cast. Uh, specimens, I cast three specimens for each mix, and I looked at um, just the bug holes, the number of bug holes, since post-production time is so important in precast plants. Um, the or in the graph, the orange is larger bug holes, bigger than 0 0.1. 0 0.1 is just like a pinhole. Um, but basically, 
when I had, and you can see from the photograph as, as well, the type three with no limestone had a lot of bug holes, much more than anything else. As soon as I added 15% um, limestone, um, you see how the, 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 the three micron and the 25 micron improved the surface finish quite a bit. And the 40 micron, um, even at 15% cement replacement, had really, really great surface finish. I didn't even have any large bug holes. And so in summary, um, Adding limestone helped um, the surface finish, and then um, adding the the 40 micron was the, the had the best um, surface finish. I also looked at the effect of the um, concrete mixture that I was using. So these two mixes were made at the exact same day, exact same tie, exact same crew, same proportion, same everything. And you see the difference that just by using um, a revolving drum mixer versus a high shear mixer, um, you get quite a bit you get a big change in your um, slump flow. I looked at compressive strength at day um, one day, three, seven, 28, and 90 days of curing. Um, and if you look at after one day, you get, this is um, pretty much what it was I was predicting was that the three micron, everything is accelerated. So I get a higher early strength with the three micron, which is shown in blue, um, followed by the 25 micron in orange, and then the um, 40 micron in green. Um, and it sort of followed a pattern. And, and as I had 15% replacement, um, had higher strength than the 25% um, percent replacement of cement. But what was interesting is that the th by three days, there's very little variability in my, in my compressive strengths, um, even amongst the, between the 15 and the 25% cement replacement. And then finally, what I want to show is if you look at the 7, 28, and 90 days, the mix that showed the least strength was the 25 micron limestone at 25% cement replacement. And what I think is happening here is because the limestone powder and the cement were so similar, you're not getting that benefit in particle packing that you're seeing with the others. You're seeing more of a dilution effect. Um, I looked at drying shrinkage. Again, I was focusing on precast concrete where um, where um, specimens are stripped after 24 hours and basically let air dry. So this is um, these are specimens that um, were only cured um, for 24 hours in a fog room and then moved into a, um, a room at a controlled um, temperature and humidity. So they began air drying after 24 hours. The drying shrinkage ranged from about 480 to 580 microstrains. <coughs> at 28 days, um, but you see that there's very little variability. It doesn't, um, you can maybe say that the three micron limestone powder showed a little bit less shrinkage, um, but you know, they're all within my standard deviation bars. Um, but specimens with more limestone, so less cement, did experience less shrinkage. So the 25% experienced less shrinkage than the 15. And then finally, I looked at specific creep. Um, these cylinders were, cast, um, they were cured for three days, and then um, at the third day they were put into this um, creep frame where they were loaded at 40% of their compressive strength. The, the data shows um, specific creep, which is creep divided by the applied load to normalize it, um, since each one of them had slightly different compressive strength at three days, so they would have different loadings. Um, and the mixes with, you know, plain cement, and the ones with the um, type three um, with a three micron at 15% cement replacement showed the least amount of, of creep. Whereas again, that mix, the type three with the 25 micron at 25% replace, cement replacement um, showed the highest creep. So um, in conclusion, um, using limestone powder as a partial cement replacement at 15 and 25% is viable for self-consolidating concrete mixes. And it allows for tailorability of concrete mixes depending on what is important. The three micron, as we saw, accelerated hydration and set time. Um, it led to higher lease strength at one day, less shrinkage and lower creep rates. But it does produce less workable mixes and we have to use um, higher doses of high range water reducing admixture to accommodate. The 25 micron has more of a dilution effect. Um, there were moderate changes in set time, slower compressive strength development, but by three days we were pretty good and had less workability, uh, had good workability. And then the 40 micron um, slows things down. We saw slower compressive strength development, but by, again, by three days we were good. Um, but it, produ it produces really good workable um, mixes and really high surface finish. And the 25 micron limestone powder at 25% cement replacement showed the greatest dilution effect. 
the lowest compressive strength, the highest creep rate, and I would not recommend that for, um, for use. Um, I just want to thank everybody that helped me through this, and I thank you guys, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Cardellino. We have time for only one question for and a short one. Okay.